It's been about a week since Beyond Light launched, and with Beyond Light, there are new IC subclasses. As you can imagine, there are a lot of complaints in PvP about getting frozen. Although it doesn't happen to me as much, I must be doing something different. So that's what brings us to today's video. I'm here to give you 10 tips to combat stasis. Okay, so now starting off with it, just keep in mind that there is no specific order to this. I would say ideally you want to be doing everything on this list, not anything in isolation. So starting off, we got number one, which is Radar Bait. In Destiny 2 PvP, everyone's eyes are glued to the top left of the screen because of how much information the radar shows you. I could make a whole video dedicated to just this topic, but the highlights include showing where your opponent is generally, how fast they're moving because of how fast the red transitions from one segment of the pie to the next. Then we also have whether or not an enemy is above or below you because of how dark the red is shown, as well as whether or not there is one or multiple enemies. The most important aspect we're going to tackle in this tip is how fast an opponent is moving. As you pay attention to how red transitions on the radar from one segment to the next, you can get a good feel of how fast an opponent is moving. And this relies on a natural instinct of a player to throw a grenade at their feet when they see an enemy fast approaching. So we're going to exploit this by doing the opposite. We're not ever going to fully commit. We're going to run at a corner and then run the opposite direction right when we touch that corner or show our shoulder. We're trying to get the enemy to waste their grenade and melee because if you have a stasis subclass equip, the cooldown is an extreme time on those cooldowns. It's very long. Normal fast cooldowns, about 30 seconds. Fast stasis cooldown, about a minute. Speaking of stasis grenades, I'm sure you're very familiar with the cold snap grenade. This one is very overpowered, and I don't want to gloss over that because someone's going to tell me about it in the comment section otherwise. Yes, they are overtuned. I would also say the Warlock melee is overtuned. But unfortunately, it's in the game no matter how much we dislike it, and we have to wait for a patch. So here's how we can attempt to deal with them at least right now. Tip number two. When you hear a cold snap, jump. Here is the sound, the audio cue of a cold snap. If you hear this in PvP and you see your screen start to highlight icy, you should be jumping and laterally moving. For those unaware of the cold snap grenade, you throw it at the floor near an opponent and it auto tracks them. The tracking is very fast so you only have a split second to jump and get away. But however, if you are near a wall, it will track you up the wall. And the worst part is, if you or a teammate gets frozen, the cold snap grenade will send an additional seeker out of the frozen target to someone who is not frozen. And if they get frozen, well then it sends out another seeker. Anyway, that's enough about cold snaps before I get on a rant. The third tip is to use a primary just more often. So the background gameplay is going to exaggerate slower primary based gameplay. You don't have to play this slow, but you do have to use your primary this much. Since stasis abilities can wall out opponents and slow them down so they can't close the gap with a shotgun, this makes a primary much more important. I will still mention that at the high level, sniper rifles are still just better primaries and better shotguns. However, you don't run into players of that caliber all the time. It's just if you're at the 5500 bracket, you will probably run into teams that don't use a primary whatsoever and don't get punished for it because the sniper rifle is that easy to use. Yes, I'm talking to you, mouse and keyboard. But anyway, because of the presence of stasis, using a primary is a good rule of thumb. What stasis does is it has the potential threat to shut down very fast movement or to zone people. As a result, it's a lot harder to pick up a shotgun kill and this forces more people to have a primary out. So if you have a primary out and they have a shotgun out and they're out of position, you will win that gunfight because you will hit a primary shot on them first and then if they also try to close the gap in between those shots, you can just quick draw to your shotgun to clean them up. This segues pretty nicely into the fourth tip which is no brainless approaches, either slow and methodical or hyperspeed. If you take the normal approach of in a moderately straight line, occasional zigzag, occasional ability jump, just push forward shotgun player, you're going to have a terrible time in stasis land. When I talk about a brainless approach, that essentially means not employing any of these tips in this video. Again, you don't have to play as slow as the background gameplay. This is exaggerated just to show that you can have success and you cannot get frozen 
if you avoid brainless plays and have some sense of purpose. So an idea of this is as I'm getting kills, I'm paying attention to my radar, first and foremost. I'm paying attention to where my teammates are, where I'm getting enemy kills, and this gives me a good indication of exactly where my enemies are spawning and how many I'm about to engage. Typically, you want to fight things with a teammate always, but sometimes because of map control, you have to push out and fight. This will ensure that your team gets an objective like a flag or maybe get some power ammo. You can also keep a running tally of what your opponents are using so whenever you see a usual name, you know what to expect. I did say snipers are a plague in the competitive playlist, but they're also a plague in control. While it's not as threatening of you getting domed every single engagement, nobody really wants to move because of sniper rifles. They are perfectly content sitting in the back of the map, barely going positive because they just enjoy sniping. And more power to them. It just doesn't really feel like an engaging first person shooter experience. The worst part about encountering snipers is no matter how well you're playing or how good of a decision you make, there is always a chance that you flinch them onto your head. So even if they have terrible aim, there's still a chance that they end your streak, they end your fun experience. And for that reason, I almost want to uninstall and not play the game for very long PvP sessions. Snipers are out of control and everyone needs to speak up about this. But uh, on that note, that brings us to the next tip, which is never challenge a snipe. I know I did it in the background, but that was out of pure frustration. If you want better games, do not challenge a snipe. You'll see later in this gameplay that I don't challenge the snipe because I don't have a super to bail me out. This is kind of the tip. Use utility, use teammates to flush out a snipe, block vision, or make it so that they have to hit two headshots. And that's exactly what I just did. I forced both my opponents to hit a headshot body shot combo, which is highly unlikely when I have a mobile hammer super with a ability to get its health back after a kill. It is so unlikely that they pull it off that it's worth the risk for me to maybe convince them to leave the spawn. To flip the spawns so that maybe they're not in the back of the map. But as you can see by the background gameplay, they will be back there shortly. Which does tie into the next tip, which is slay out, then play objectives. So if you want to win the match, you have to force the enemy to flip a spawn so that you can realistically keep the enemy far enough from the central objective, from the map control, from the power ammo, so that you have realistic time to capture it. With stasis being in play now, all it takes is one single grenade to ruin somebody standing on a zone. So play with this in mind. Step on a flag to make it highlight, step near power ammo so that somebody feels like they have to use their grenade on that zone or the zone risks being captured. You can bait out the grenade and then after that grenade dissipates, you can hop back on the zone, but only after you slay your opponents. This forces them to be in the spawn screen, which gives you that extra couple seconds to secure that zone. If you need additional protection on the zone, I highly recommend understanding what your barricade and hunter dodge does to stasis abilities. This is uh, the next tip, which is barricade and hunter dodge. These are amazing against stasis. Now, of course, the cold snap grenade does not get countered by a barricade. If I don't say it here, your friendly neighborhood titan will let you know in the comment section below. But just know, I said it. I showed it in the gameplay. Anyhow, the barricade being an additional piece of cover makes your opponent's use of abilities that much more predictable. But beyond that obvious fact, the barricade has an interesting interaction with the dusk field grenade. This grenade has a gravity effect that pulls your opponent towards it, and if they stand in it for long, they're frozen. If you barricade outside of the middle of that grenade radius, you will not be slowed or frozen. An additional tip is to crank up your resilience so you have your barricade more often. I see so many titans running like 3 or below resilience, and that just doesn't make any sense. Not only is the barricade good, but resilience is also tied to how much health you have when breaking out of being frozen. Additionally, having high resilience means you have more health in general, which means it might take an extra shot or two to kill. And this is especially useful knowing that if you're frozen, you can pop a super to immediately break out, and having that just slight more health might be the difference maker between you converting on being frozen to popping super, to getting a kill, to making an orb of light, to making your teammates pick up that orb of light so they have a super earlier. Before I get off topic, let's mention the Hunter Dodge, which does in fact counter the Cold Snap. So while the Cold Snap is tracking, if you dodge, it no longer tracks. But keep in mind, if you use your dodge, but the Cold Snap freezes a teammate, you're still out of luck because the Cold Snap will catch you when you don't have your dodge up. You can avoid this entirely by using the new exotic 
it's a helmet, the Mask of Bakris. This gives you a blink-like teleport forward, which pretty much avoids all this nonsense. If you're curious about how this new exotic operates, keep in mind my teammate Drewski made a video reviewing it, so please check that out, link in the description below. And speaking of teammates, this brings us to the following two tips, the first of which is only push forward when you have utility or teammates. So look at the background gameplay. I don't have teammates, and I don't really have any useful utility. I normally run Heart of Inmost Light, so that sticky grenade would have been a kill, but I'm running Capri's Horn just so nobody can say that I am not countering stasis in any of this gameplay. So yeah, I am outnumbered by the snipers, I don't have anything useful, I'm just going to simply back out. And hopefully not uninstall, but on subject, the next tip is to balance your team composition. This means that maybe having three stasis subclasses isn't as effective as having one or two stasis classes with a more Slayer-centric light subclass like Top Tree Dawnblade, Stormcaller, Way of the Wraith, Bottom Tree Striker Titan, Hell, I've had a lot of success with Code of the Commander and even Top Tree Striker Titan where I'm throwing one hit kill lightning grenades all over the map. I gotta say, this really solidifies why Stasis is the best addition in Beyond Light because all the team composition possibilities just make me want to try every single one of them. This has essentially made the game extremely replayable for me. Aside from the, the sniper comment, I could really see myself sinking hours and hours and hours of my time just to try all of these. So kudos to Bungie for trying something new despite the pandemic making game development very difficult. And unrelated, let's get to our final tip, which is Antaeus words. These look fantastic on paper, but I assure you, they're so much harder to pull off in an actual game. Yeah, you saw that background gameplay correctly. The Warlock melee that instant freezes, you can send that right back at them. You can also send the Hunter Shuriken back at them too, but remember they have two of them, so it's unlikely that you get both of them reflected, but it can happen. I ran Antaeus Words for most of the 0 to 5500 competitive playlists this uh, time around, and it did help prevent some freezing, but it didn't prevent all of it. It made it so that the aggressive playstyle is just slightly safer, and that was enough for me to pick them up. Well on that note, that brings an end to the video, so I hope these tips prove somewhat useful, and I hope your daily PvP sessions are that much smoother. Let me know if I need to make more videos like this in the future, I certainly can. I'm taking a much more fun approach to this game, and less about pushing it competitively or reaching the skill ceiling. But I do think trying to give you guys the most bang for your buck tip and improvement videos would make your day to day play sessions that much more enjoyable, and for that reason alone, I think it's worth doing. So if you would like more of this, let me know. Take care, everyone.